the chairman of this uh, investigative committee of the House, Honorable Bami Deli Salam, other very important members, honorable members of the committee, members of staff of the Nigerian Communications Commission here present, including those who will be given evidence, whose um, oath has just been administered, um, and others who have not taken the oath, but are part of this important uh, you know, team from the Nigerian Communications Commission. The mobile network operators, representatives here present, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen watching this very, very important investigative here. I would like to start by giving an overview of the important role that the Universal Service Provision Fund is playing. This fund was established on the strong recommendation of the International Telecommunications Union that such a fund should be set up to provide telecommunication services in rural, unserved, and underserved areas of our country, along with other countries of the world. And as such, when the Nigerian Communications Act 2003 was established by this same National Assembly in 2003, an important part of that act, you know, contained a provision for the national, I mean, for the Universal Service Provision Fund. I think it is important here to commend the National Assembly for the foresight you know, they have shown in including the Universal Service Provision Fund in the NCA 2003. But for that singular, very important step taken by the National Assembly would not be having this conversation today. So we commend the National Assembly and we equally commend the chairman and members of this committee for also wanting to find out the journey so far in the utilization of the fund earmarked for the provision of telecommunication services in rural, unserved, and underserved areas of our country. So the key word here, Mr. Chairman, is provision of universal access and universal service in rural, unserved, and underserved areas of the country. The hallmark, Honorable Chairman, of universal access and service are three. Availability of service, accessibility of service, and affordability of service. We, we call them the three A's of universal service and access. So immediately this fund was established, the NCC galvanized into action by identifying where the access gaps are in this country. And through this very, very important consultancy, we have in the NCC a map containing clusters of access gaps in the entire country. This study took place in 2013 and it consisted of 207 clusters of access gaps with a total population of 37 million Nigerians. So, in the year 2013, the total number of Nigerians in these clusters of access gaps are 39 million. That's a huge figure of Nigerians who do not in any way have access to telecommunication services. Yeah, it's, it's, the exact figure is 36.8 million. 
so we can make it 37 million. So I'm, I'm reading from the table here, please. Now, I must say progress has been made in reducing these clusters. And it is important to quote the figures because I have them here in the table. Even before I move on to provide further clarification on the useful work that the NCCI has been doing to address this important issue of uh, uh, lack of access you know, to telecommunication services in rural and served and underserved services of our country. By the year 2019, that is exactly six years. I, I'm sorry for interrupting you, please. Let me know which particular document you are speaking to so that we can, it's here. We can follow you. But um, do we have the that? Over, the overview is with you, yes. Clark? But I'm not, I'm not reading the overview. But we have the overview. You, 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 you do. Submitted. Overview of the coverage area. Is that yes. what? Yes. Everything I'm saying Please get that is in the document us. we have submitted. And I thought it would be boring for me to just bend my head okay. like this and be reading every word in the, okay. in the but, overview. But the particular document you're speaking to is not here. No, no, it's in the overview. Okay. And, it's in, and the overview is a document we have submitted. Go ahead, sir. Yes. So what I'm saying is, a, is from a document that has been already been submitted to this committee by first March. Or past March, yes. Okay. If you feel more comfortable, Mr. Chairman, I can read the document. Thank you. So if you are comfortable with my mode of presentation, then do I have your permission to continue then? So thank you very much. So, please, let me repeat myself. In 2013, as contained in the document we have submitted, there was a study conducted, a consultancy, driven by the Nigerian Communications Commission to identify clusters of access gaps in the country. The reason for this study, Mr. Chairman, is very important. Without knowing where these access gaps are, we will not be able to provide the intervention that is necessary to bridge the gaps. But these are not gaps, you know, as we know them, we normally call them clusters of access gaps. Okay? So there are 207 clusters of access gaps according to that study. And in these clusters of access gaps, totaling 207, there are close to 37 million Nigerians. The implication here, Mr. Chairman, is to say these 37 million Nigerians do not have access to telecommunication services. And I think that is why we're having this conversation today. What have we done to bring telecommunication services to people? living in rural, unserved, and underserved areas of this country, totaling 37 million Naira. Courtesy of the consultancy that was conducted in 2013. By 2019, Mr. Chairman, we have succeeded in reducing the clusters of access gaps to 114. Okay? through the deployment of the necessary infrastructure needed to bring services to people living in rural and served and unserved areas of the country. This deployment of infrastructure, mainly base transceiver stations, and I'm going to give information about the total number of base transceiver stations we have so far deployed and give, give a breakdown on year by year basis. This resulted in the reduction of Nigerians in those clusters from 37 million to 31 million. That is way back in 2019. By 2022, we have reduced the clusters of access gaps to 97. So from 2007 in 2013, to only 97 in 2022, 
and the number of Nigerians again has come down from 37 million in 2013 to 27 million as we speak. This is a position now. How did we achieve this? We achieved this by deploying from, 20, from 2009 to 2011 a total of 79 these transceiver stations and again in 2013 to 2018 we deployed an additional 124 124 base transceiver stations then lately from 2019 mr chairman to 2022 we deployed a total of 664, I mean 364 base transceiver stations. The total number of base transceiver stations we have deployed to date is 567 as we speak. This is the number. So, whereas this information may not be at the 567 base transceiver stations have so far been deployed from the time the act was established okay the fund was established to date okay so um but when you look at the bigger you know the 97 clusters of access gaps with a total population of 27 or 28 million nigerians still without access to telecommunication services as we speak this is also not desirable it's not something that we can allow to continue and that is why in our presentation we have indicated additional things we have done to be able to bridge these gaps and, and given an analysis of the amount of money that will be required to completely bridge the 97 clusters of access gaps in the country arising from the deterioration of the exchange rate of the naira to the dollar we have a figure of close to 700 billion naira in the total amount required to completely bridge you know gaps within the clusters that i have stated earlier this is not a tall order. It can be done. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's in page, page five of the submission now. It's 667 billion. Billion, approximately 700 billion as we speak. Give and take. And that would be equivalent to about one billion dollars. Okay? The analysis is presented in the table. The Secretary Universal Service Provision Plan will be able to answer questions about how we arrive at this analysis. We believe this is doable. We believe one way to do this quickly is if not all the entire amount is provided, for something substantially to be made available to the NCC so that you know we can be able to bridge these gaps, you know, in the rural unsolved and as underserved areas once and for all but i must say mr chairman even in advanced technologies in countries like the u.s the european union you know asia south south east asia you know other parts of the world you still come across rural unsolved and as underserved areas it's just a question of the number Okay, so virtually all countries are committing huge financial resources in order to be able to bridge access of you know um, gaps clusters of, clusters of access gaps in their countries and nigeria cannot be an exception and i think one way we can do this is to de declare a state of emergency you know an emergency that will lead to the bridging of all these clusters of access gaps in this country like i said we have done our homework we know where the, the clusters are we have the map and we know the, the you know the infrastructure that is required 
in order to ensure we do this effectively so that no Nigerian, young or old, man or woman, small or big, is disenfranchised, you know, in benefiting, you know, from the useful telecommunication services that, you know, many Nigerians, you know, are enjoying as we speak. We have close to 220 million Nigerians, active subscribers alone, active mobile voice subscribers. That's a huge number, which is more than the entire population of the country. I think this is because many Nigerians, like the EBC himself, have two handsets. Okay. So it's not surprising that, you know, the number is well over and above the population of the country. 220 million Nigerians are active subscribers of telecommunication services. But it is sad that about 27 million of this number are Nigerians living in these clusters where there are no telecommunication services. So on our part, Mr. Chairman, distinguished members of this committee, the Nigerian Communications Commission has indeed demonstrated commitment in bridging the, you know, the, the gaps within the clusters we have stated. You know, we have utilized the funds, you know, provided by law, you know, in order to ensure that we do our work. We have evidence to show the deployments we have done in terms of vase transceiver stations. We have evidence to show that the clusters of access gap have reduced significantly from 207 in 2013 to only 97 as we speak. We have evidence to show that the number of Nigerians within the clusters have come down from that 37 million that I mentioned to you yeah, know, close to yeah, 27 yeah, million yeah, as we speak. You have said all that, yeah. Sorry? I said you have, you have stated all those Yes, I'm stressing the fact. Yeah, okay. You know, I just want so, to maximize our time very well. Thank you very much. Mm. So we want to assure this committee that we are doing our work, that we have not spared any stones and turned in order to deploy services to rural, unserved, and underserved areas of the country, courtesy of the mandate assigned to us by, you know, the National Assembly. You know,